today we are going to be talking about an interesting sort of hypothetical but not really question of what I would do if it wasn't software. Now my immediate choices are and I kind of have a couple answers to this. Um, it's not just a straight black and white answer. The reason for that is uh, before when I was a young lad uh, <laughs> young lad being like 15, 14, 16, um, what direction I thought I was going to be going in was journalism. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And one of them was that I was, you know, my father was a writer. I, I haven't talked too much about what my dad does, but uh, he was a writer who's written television scripts and things like that. And so uh, he was very supportive of that. And it was something he got. And, you know, as a young man, you try to go in the direction your father does on occasion. And um, he was successful, and I wanted to kind of follow in those footsteps. So that would be my first, like, oh, that would be one possible direction. And I I worked at a, a data center called Quadranet in Los Angeles for a while where I actually wrote tech blogs for them to try and, you know, get views and things like that. And so it wasn't a path I went down. Um, but after that job, I really didn't enjoy it, to be honest with you. It, uh... Got a little boring. It, I didn't really see myself doing it long term. So that would be my first thought. Uh, but having kind of done that, not what I would do. Um, my next thought is, I don't know if this counts. Because if software doesn't exist or if I don't do software, I can't do subsets of software, right? So like my next, next immediate thought would be... Um, project management for a software company. That's something I would like to do as well. Or like a tech evangelicist role uh, or UI UX. But to me, that's all three of those things are too similar to software for it to actually count as answer. Now, why would I do project management? Well, I think my people skills are okay. I don't think they're the greatest. And I also think that it's a, a role that I would enjoy as well as like a tech evangelicist role. And if you're not, if you're not a, uh, familiar with what like a tech evangel evangelicist would do or what that actually entails um as as someone in a comment section once put they are the honeypot for developers if you don't know what the honeypot is it's kind of like they you bring in with the honey and then give you what they want sort of thing you can look it up uh, there's a better definition um but essentially is they get developers to use their technologies and they can do this through a variety of things where it's hackathons or meetups or um you know youtube channels outreaching so there's a variety of ways but that was something i always would be really interested in and to this day if i ever was offered a role for a company that i wanted to work with um you know let's say free code camp decides uh, that they're making millions of dollars all of a sudden and they wanted, uh, so they wanted an outreach person. They wanted someone to throw on hackathons. They wanted someone to interview developers. They wanted, so, like, that would be, that would be the world's most perfect role for me. Not necessarily a free code camp, but, you know, Microsoft or, I don't really use Macs, so not Apple, <laughs> uh, Amazon, any of the big companies or the smaller companies that I use their products. I'm, I'm a big believer of working at companies that I actually use and things like that, um, in a perfect world, right? All right, so with all that being said, that's too software related. So what would it be, knowing what I know now, right? And that, that's the thing is knowing what you know now. It's easy to, that's why I said the journalism thing. Because like, let's say you asked me 10 years ago before I, I kind of ever even thought about software. Uh, you know, probably less than that, five years ago. Um, that would have been journalism. And then the, a, if, well, not what I'm doing now, these other software-related roles, right? So, uh, too similar. Um, and this last one, um, you know, I've talked about it for a bit. I think the most practical job, knowing what I know now, would be digital marketing. Uh, which I think is, even though it involves technology, I think it's, uh, I think it's slight different than, you know, we're talking about SEO, we're talking about social media marketing, we're talking about, you know, things that aren't exactly hard, so hard, Software realm skills. This is more marketing with computer skills and social media. And the reason for that is it, there's a couple. Um, one is it, it if you've looked at like the um, success of, of people getting jobs from like Seth's course. 
Seth's course is, uh, if you remember back, I interviewed Seth about digital marketing not too long ago and how to get started. And he has a course. And if you're interested in it, it'll be a uh, link will be in the description below. Um, but a ton of people are getting jobs from it. And I, I did a little research and it seems that the digital marketing space, the AdWords space, um, it's really, uh, there's a higher supply than there is a demand. And it, 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 you know, there's a variety of reasons that, you know, it's not being taught in traditional education. Um, boot camps for it are just popping up now. They, so it's still a big gap. And so you have things like Seth's course where people are learning valuable skills that the market needs and able to get jobs with it after one, two or three months of taking the course. Um, and it's something that I think I would enjoy a little bit. There's something very pleasurable about the idea of still working with computers in, in one fashion or another. And I have a passion for social media, although the bulk of the digital marketing course or digital marketing in general is AdWords and things like that. Um, the second reason is that the salaries are fairly decent. Once you get up there, you know, you could still make over a hundred thousand as a digital marketer with a couple of years experience. Uh, the third thing is just one of the few jobs out there other than software, but since that doesn't exist as hypothetical, um, that you could work remotely or work for yourself. I think one of the greatest appeals to me as a developer was that if I wanted to, I could start my own company today. It may not be a good company. It may not make a ton of money, but I have the skill set and the means to do such a thing, and who knows what will happen with it. And digital marketing gives you kind of a similar thing where you can have clients. You don't ever even have to meet with them, and you can kind of continue down that path. And so um, I think that would be the direction I'd, I would be going. Um, so my question to you guys is, uh, what would you be doing if it wasn't software? I, I'm curious. Because I think now that we're trying to re reprogram our brains so we can look at these things a little bit more objectively and see, all right, well, what's going to give us a good life in terms of money and lifestyle? And what's going to give us um, that lifestyle we want slash how we want to live? And in a perfect world, what job would that be for you? And I think we can all kind of break it down now that we're software developers are trying to be to think at these things objectively but as always guys if there's a question you want me to answer leave it in the comments below don't forget to join our facebook group code tech and caffeine and support me on patreon.com slash code 360 i hope you guys stay focused i hope you guys stay motivated and i hope you continue the grind i'll see you next time hey guys thanks for watching the video if you're interested in coding boot camp check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition and don't forget to like comment subscribe and share and support me on patreon i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching